Hello everyone, this is Akaim and welcome back to another episode of World of Warships and today we are taking a look and final goodbye to the tier 9 French cruiser, the St. Louis. And I have to say, I really do like this uh, the ship. It's actually a really good ship. And I do have a very good game for you guys today. Now originally I had thought about showing off a game that I had a few days ago where I actually earned Solo Warrior, which is actually the second time I've earned uh, that medal in my two years of playing the ships. Good Lord, two years. Yes, two years it has been. Actually, well over two years. Uh, so one other side little thing before the game really gets going. Uh, do stay till the end of the video. Uh, there is going to be a special announcement uh, about a possible thing that might be coming up in the future. So do keep in keep watching all the way to the end. So anyway, we are playing on Mountain Range. Uh, we have two Ismos, Bismarck, Colorado, Hood, St. Louis, Ibuki, Edinburgh, Megami, Atlanta, Benson, and Ashotsu. On the enemy team, there is a Missouri, Fidel Grossa, North Carolina, King George, Gneisenau, St. Louis, Ibuki, Hipper, Megami, Kagero, Loyang, and Abliskavica. Now, this is, I believe, actually a replay I had uh, around the very beginning of September, so just right after the British battleships actually came out. Uh, so, as you can see over there in the chat, as I just hit my mic, uh, we're talking about the British battleships. And, yes, so there's only one British battleship in this battle, but that's all right. So, going to the St. Louis, she's actually a decent ship. Especially uh, once you get past, say, the Charles Motel. The Charles Motel is actually a really good ship, too. I really do like her. Uh, but there are a few negative things about her. But we'll talk more about it in just a second. We do have a enemy hipper that is starting to push in. The detection on the St. Louis isn't the worst, but it's definitely not the best for Tier 9. 11.5. And we are now spotted. And... There is a North Carolina, but he is definitely a lot further in the background and not that bad concern. But there is a enemy Saint uh, Lo Yang that has popped up around four kilometers. Now, this is something you don't want to be. Uh, St. Louis's HE is pretty decent and also has torpedoes. Now, the torpedoes are nothing extravagant. Uh, it really comes down to the guns. The guns are pretty good. They hit pretty hard and they can cause that high chance of fire. So they are decent as far as actually knocking out destroyers. So you can definitely use that to your advantage uh, whenever possible. Now torpedoes are away. And let's see, we're going to drop off our other side. Might as well. They are 9 kilometer range. Uh, they, they're okay, but we do get our very first kill of the game. And a low yang goes down to our torpedoes. And this is where the St. Louis has kind of an issue is her armor. Her armor is very subpar. And this is why having the engine boost is so beneficial for the St. Louis. The St. Louis, if it did not have this, would have a much more difficult time to actually uh, playing in battles because this allows you to maneuver very, very quickly and get out of harm's way uh, whenever you do get... Uh, a little bit too close for comfort, to say the very least. This allows you to reposition and get into a much better spot uh, than you were originally. Torpedoes, oh wow. You actually might get lucky with that. Look at that dispersion on that torpedo. That one random torpedo actually gets around the island and lands on the hipper, but unfortunately we don't get a flooding, but at least we got some damage on him. And we got another fire. This is probably the most nice thing about the St. Louis is her chance of fires. Um, so overall, this, this battle really does show uh, multiple things about the St. Louis. The only downside is it does not show her AA. Uh, her AA is actually pretty good. It's actually fairly decent, especially if you put a little bit of perks or modules on her. Uh, you can at least defend yourself and possibly even assist uh, friendly uh, teammates against enemy aircrafts. Hipper is very low on health. Can we get the second kill? There we go. Very, very nice. Now, one thing I do notice whenever I do take out my St. Louis is I do have a tendency to not look at the map. As you will see uh, here in just a moment, uh, I, I do have a really bad tendency. You can see uh, this North Carolina is sitting behind this island. And even though he's not 
obviously particularly spotted and oh oh Peter Grossa is opening up on us this is a really guy good time to turn away um, once again that engine boost really does save your butt uh, whenever you are being focused on you can see three ships were aiming at us and yeah yeah uh, here I really made a mistake I'm trying to get turned as you can see I'm fairly broadside I have four ships aiming at me uh, we get lit on fire I am holding my fire trying to go out of detection and fortunately we are able to Open get away with that I'm actually very satisfied with that uh, North Carolina opens up on us uh, but I think we should be fine should not pose a big issue so going back to the shells let's actually talk about the guns the guns are actually really good of a decent range around 18.3 kilometers uh the shell velocity is fairly decent uh you do have to aim a little bit more especially with ap uh but overall once you get accustomed to the guns uh, you can land them fairly reliably um so do do want to get practice on the guns but other than that um they're actually very very reliable now there is one thing as you can see we have just lost our rudder and unfortunately that's still a negative thing about the french cruisers is they tend to lose their rudder quite often so do keep that in mind whenever you are pulling away you're probably going to lose your rudder and more than likely going to be using your damage control uh just to repair that so HE is pretty good. Uh, she's a great fire starter, and this is kind of how you have to play the St. Louis. Almost any French cruiser, for that matter. She's going to be a long range sniper. That's really going to be the best way to play her because her armor is quite terrible. Um, you do have spaced armor, and there is a potential of having those AP rounds from battleships ricocheting and not actually penetrating into your citadel. But you still have a tendency uh, for having those random citadels. So do keep that in mind. Look at that. Got another fire on that fitted rosa. And as you can see, a cyclone is starting to take effect. Now this is the worst thing can happen for a St. Louis. Is a cyclone. Because when that cyclone hits, it drops down to 8 kilometers. And once again, your armor is not very good. You cannot bow tank. Uh, you can try to go a little bow in, see if that would help. Uh, you can try to see if you can go 30 to 7 degrees uh, from a enemy ship. Uh, see if your space armor will work to your advantage. But more than likely, you are going to get citadeled and you are going to die. So St. Louis, not a great uh close personal uh brawler that you can see say for example the german cruisers are actually uh, fairly decent at that uh, but yes definitely you want to stick at long range but unfortunately the cyclone is going to put a hamper on that now for whatever reason this uh enemy fita grossa is kind of pushing in quite heavily uh he does have a shootout sue that is currently dropping torps on him and for whatever reason there is I believe the King uh, KGV all the way up north with a St. Louis. Uh, they're definitely not pushing in. We are at least winning at the moment. We have a ship advantage and we also have uh, both B and C. Obviously B is being contested. But fortunately for us, the enemy team is not really pushing in uh, together as a unit. I believe the Ibuki is coming uh, towards B. Uh, he is probably going to be coming a problem for us. There is also a enemy Kagero around as well. So we talked about the HE. HE has good fire chance. AP is actually pretty decent. Like I said, you do have to aim a little bit more, give it a little bit more lead uh, just to ensure that your aiming actually lands where you want it, say a citadel. So AP, once again, is actually fairly decent. It's 203, has decent pen penetration, um, not as good as obviously the USN cruiser line, but overall, flat broadside target, you can definitely punish quite heavily. Now, that Fita Grossa is still kicking alive around somewhere, and 
I, I, I don't our, our team slowly pushing out we do have two ismos i believe they're actually on the same uh division so they are going to be at least working together which is good uh, but right now i don't want to be showing a lot of broadside and looks like we have a ibuki kagero and a freddy uh pushing towards b and right now that ibuki is going to be my more main threat and we are spotted by the enemy of Boogie. I'm going to focus him down. Uh, I do have AP loaded. And I, like I said, this is actually probably a really good demonstration on the AP. Uh, torpedoes. Eh, you never know. We already had two torpedo hits today. I will gladly take that. Fortunately, the Ibuki decides to show me a broadside. This is something you don't need to do. Three citadels. Look at that. Three citadels knocked out his engine. And one nice little thing about my St. Louis, at least with my captain. Look, two more citadels and one dead Ibuki. So those torpedoes were not even needed. So one thing about my captain is I do run a adrenaline rush on him. So more damage I take, the faster the guns reload. Not saying that the guns don't reload fairly quick. They're actually about nine seconds, I believe. Which is pretty decent. Uh, but once you do take a lot of damage, uh, you will allow which will allow you to fire uh quicker and quicker so not bad we have three kills we have done 115k and can we get a kill number four that would be nice oh looks like the kagero just went down to the friendly uh ismo and here i am caught a little broadside to a north carolina yes uh you don't want to be doing this Unfortunately, this North Carolina is looking right at us, uh, so we're going to quickly pull away. And this is something you definitely have to be doing quite a lot, is dodging and uh, juking whenever you come against enemy ba battleships. Because, once again, your armor is very subpar uh, compared to other cruisers of this tier. Now, one good thing is the engine boost, like I mentioned, but... Besides it making you go faster, it also makes you more nimble. Because when the engine boost is actually offline, it does feel like she is kind of sluggish in the water. Uh, it doesn't seem like you're able to make these turns like you can see now. Look at this turn. That turn is very, very nice. It kind of reminds me a lot of the uh, British cruisers. Uh, North Carolina event against a hood. Get kill number four. Uh, this was the same North Carolina captain we were facing off against earlier. And there we go. Kill number four. Very, very nice. And we are sitting comfortably at around 124k. Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, the battle is actually fairly close. We are ahead in ships. And, well, I mean, not fairly close. But, I mean, uh, as far as ships are concerned, we are fairly close. Uh, there is a friendly Ismo that is currently facing off against a Bliskavica and a KGV. And I believe there's also a St. Louis up there as well. And not probably the smartest idea, honestly, going up all the way north just to possibly deal more damage. I do say that... I do say to the Ismo that he should not be going alone. And you really shouldn't. Uh, whenever a cyclone is in effect, you don't want to be alone. Uh, group up. You do definitely a lot more damage. And you'll survive a lot longer if you have um, your teammates there to assist us. Assist you. Uh, but the Ismo does take out the KGV. Uh, there is that Bliskovica around. Don't really... Uh, know where he might be going. Uh, we are about to win. We are sitting at 949 points. Uh, we are instead going to push towards A. The enemy team is definitely not pushing that hard. Might as well take advantage of this. Uh, unfortunately, this Ismo is going to go uh, on his own little way. Possibly yeah, see if he can take out that Blizzard. I don't think he will. Uh, but overall, not a bad battle. Uh, sitting at 124k, uh, there is still an enemy good nice now around somewhere. Hmm, wonder where he is. Definitely has not been very uh, helpful uh, for his teammates. Let's see, 994, and that should actually be about game. 
So overall, not a bad game. So we're going to hop to the victory screen and then we are going to jump into port and take a look at her in all her glory. So our team earned a victory. We brought home 460,807 silver, 6,327 XP, and we earned first blood. We did 124,435 points of damage. 106 shell hits, two torpedo hits, which is something you don't always get all that often, uh, four incapacitation, four kills, seven fires, and you can definitely get a little bit more fires than that, but that's not too bad. Uh, one flooding, five citadels against Adabuki, one defended base flag, and two secondary hits, which is something you don't see all too often. Uh, we were top of the team with a base XP of 2057. We did around 31,000 against the enemy Ibuki with the AP, around 23,000 against the Hipper, around 14,600 against the Lo Yang, and around 12,000 against that North Carolina. But look at the Freddy. Uh, 42,894 was was about half his health, I believe. Uh, main batteries, HE did around 44,000. AP did around 31,000. Uh, secondaries did 231. Hmm, not bad. Uh, but fires, 32,278. I would not be surprised. And in fact, I have earned a wither multiple times with the St. Louis. Uh, very, very nice ship to use. Uh, maybe not as good as, say, the Ibuki or the Zao, but still fairly decent, and you definitely do have that speed, which is very, very beneficial. So, uh, we are going to go ahead and jump into port and take a look at her stats. See you guys there. All right, everyone, welcome back to the port, and like I kind of have hinted at, the St. Louis is actually a really good ship. Uh, she's probably one of my more favorite tier 9s that i played. Obviously, my very favorite is the Neptune. Uh, but she definitely is one of the more, I don't want to say fun, but she is kind of fun. Uh, she's great at sniping. Uh, her engine boost really is beneficial, but obviously there are downsides to her. Uh, but let's actually take a look at the stats and hopefully that will help make your mind, especially if you're working up the French cruiser line, maybe this will help you guys, especially what to expect once you get up to, let's say, the St. Louis. Uh, so starting off, survivability, 40,900. Not the greatest amount of health in the world. Uh, she's one of the lower end. Uh, her armor is quite terrible, as I have mentioned multiple times. It's very subpar. Uh, but there is a unique thing about the French cruisers, and that is due to the fact of her spaced armor. Now, the benefit of the spaced armor is it increases the amount of checks that is needed for a shell to penetrate. And there is actually a really good video uh, I Chase Gaming did uh, about the spaced armor on the French cruisers. And it does, he goes into much greater detail than what I'll be doing. Uh, but what it essentially does is it increases the amount of checks needed for AP shell to penetrate and actually go all the way through. Uh, so instead of one check to see if the shell will ricochet or not, uh, increases it to two or sometimes even three. So there is a benefit of the space armor, uh, but the St. Louis doesn't have the well doesn't have as many spaced armored areas as say the henry but you do have some and i have seen instances where i should have been citadel but i was not and that really i can as far as i can tell comes down to the fact of the spaced armor but other than that uh armor is very subpar uh she is not a close range cruiser uh, say so like the Baltimore, which does have better armor, or even, no, not even the Donskoy. The Donskoy definitely has better armor, uh, but she's more of a long-range sniper uh, more than anything else. Uh, at the very most, 140 millimeters, not the greatest. Torpedo protection, 19%. It's okay. Uh, definitely want to try to avoid those torpedoes whenever possible. Now, moving on to the main guns, uh, as per usual for the French cruisers, you have three main turrets, three guns each. They're 203 millimeters. They have an 8.8 .8 second reload time, and the guns actually turn a lot faster, especially compared to, say, the Charles Martel. 
They have a 26.5 second turn times, 180 degrees. Max dispersion is pretty nice, 148 meters at a range of 18.3 kilometers. Max HE shell damage isn't the greatest, 2,800, but the fire chance does help up for that lack of damage uh, with a 17% fire chance. Now the max AP damage is 4,900, which once again, it's not the greatest, but it is fairly decent. Uh, the range, as I mentioned before, is 18.3 kilometers, and the shell velocity is 845 meters per second. So fairly good shell arcs, uh, good travel time on the shells, and does allow you to actually land your targets, especially at that much longer range, which is extremely beneficial because that's where you're going to be playing uh, the majority of the time. Now she does have secondary turrets. Uh, she has seven dual 100 millimeters. They have a three second reload time. They will do around 1400 points of damage with a 7.0% fire chance and a 5.3 kilometer range. Once again, uh, something you won't be seeing all too often is the use of your secondaries. More than often than not, you're going to be sitting at longer range because that's where you really need to be. Now moving on to torpedoes. Uh, this is actually kind of, I guess you could say a con about the ship is her torpedoes. They're not the greatest. Uh, they're the exact same torpedoes you've had since at least tier five. Uh, you have two triple 550 millimeters, uh, one on each side, obviously. They have a 90 second reload time. Uh, they will do around 14,833, kind of average. Uh, for cruisers and have a nine kilometer range. The speed is 60 knots, which is actually decent. Not the greatest, not the worst, but they're decent as far as speeds. And that nine kilometer range can throw people off because sometimes you don't expect these random torpedoes incoming. And as you saw there, we actually got a few torpedo hits. So overall, not too bad. Uh, now moving on to a defense. Now, she's not the greatest, uh, definitely nothing compared to a Neptune or even a Baltimore, but her AA is actually pretty good, especially if you spec into basics firing training, advanced firing training, or add the module for the increased range, which can extend the range out to 7.2 kilometers. So if you want, you can kind of spec the St. Louis as a AA mount, especially if you are playing with the carrier, you are divisioned up with a carrier you can have decent AA guns. So overall, not too bad. You have 12 single 20 millimeters. Average damage is 43 with the two kilometer range. Then you have eight dual 20 millimeters. Average damage is 49 at a two kilometer range. Then you have eight dual 40 millimeters. Average damage is 90 at a 3.5 kilometer range. Then you have four quad 40 millimeters. Average damage is 64 at a 3.5 kilometer range. And then you have your secondaries, seven point or seven dual 100 millimeters. Average damage is 104 at a five kilometer range. You can definitely improve your AA. Uh, once again, if you add the module or go for advanced firing training or basics firing training. So if you want, you can definitely do this. Uh, my captain's still being worked on. Hopefully uh, we'll get him up to a tier a 19 point captain uh, soon enough. Um, now moving on to maneuverability. She is, in fact, if you include the engine boost, the fastest cruiser in the game. Without the engine boost, she's actually kind of mid as far as speed, 33 knots. But with the engine boost, you can actually get her up to around 40 knots, which is extremely beneficial. And that's kind of how the St. Louis is. She's kind of a, a dual personality, I guess you could say. Uh, with the engine boost, she's very quick, she's nimble, She's allow which allows you to get to different positioning if you need to, especially if you are in a bad positioning, because St. Louis does not do very well to being focused down. So the engine boost does allow you to get away a little bit quicker and be more advantageous to uh, avoid incoming fire shells without the engine boost she's you can definitely feel it you can definitely feel it whenever you are not running the engine boost she's much more sluggish she's a little bit slower um, so having the engine boost is very beneficial for the st louis uh turning so radius 720 meters it's all right it's not bad she is kind of a long ship 
Uh, she does take a little bit of time to turn, but with once again with the engine boost, uh, that's not as bad as without it. So rotor shift time, 8.1 seconds, pretty nice. The, having that low uh, time on the rudder shifting is very beneficial for you because once again, it allows you to dodge incoming fire from enemy battleships. Concealment. Well, her concealment's once again, all right. It's kind of in the middle. Uh, decent, but not the best. 11.5 kilometers. Uh, once again, kind of in the middle. Uh, you do have to be well aware. You don't want to push in quite heavily because you get focused down. So you do have to be aware of your positioning and where you are going to be possibly detected, especially if you are starting to push into a cap. Uh, det detectability range by air is 7.1 kilometers. Once again, kind of average, nothing too extravagant. And as I've mentioned, you're going to be playing a little bit further in the back, kind of back with the battleships. Now, moving on to the modules, uh, there are a lot of upgrades for the ship. Uh, there is the range and the hull upgrade. I would probably recommend getting the range first. This obviously will allow you to sit a little bit further back. Uh, because the stock is at around 16.7 kilometers and with it will increase the range to 18.3 kilometers. Uh, then the hull will actually give you increased AA, but the most, most beneficial thing about the uh, B hull is the reduction on the rudder shift time. Because as you can see with the stock hull, your rudder shift time is a 11.4 seconds. So having that B hole is very beneficial and I would recommend it at least getting it the second one to upgrade um, over the range because obviously you want to be a little bit further back. And as I have obviously pointed out multiple times, having the engine boost is very beneficial. You can technically get uh, spotting craft and catapult fighters, but honestly having that engine boost is extremely beneficial for the French cruiser. Uh, you also have defensive AA, or you can run hydroacoustics. Uh, having defensive AA is always a high recommendation for me. Uh, even though you may not always see carriers, if you don't have it, you don't have that possibility of shooting down aircrafts uh, whenever there is CVs in that game. Uh, now moving on to the upgrades. First off, obviously, main armaments mod 1 reduces the chance of your guns getting incapacitated. Uh, recommend this over most of those. Now here, this is actually something you could possibly opt for something different, especially if you want to increase the range of your AA. You can get a gun mod 2. It once again increases the range of your AA, but I like having the dispersion on my shells reduced just a little bit just so that they're a little bit tighter and more likely to hit. Third thing I've actually gone with is the main battery mod 3. Now this obviously reduces the reload time but increases the traverse time uh, by 13%. You could opt for gunfire control system mod 2 increases your range by 16% but I much rather have the increased damage output with the increased reload rate uh, over the range because you have decent range. You have 18.3 kilometers. Yes, it's not as good as say the Donskoy or the Rune, but you have a much better chance of doing more damage long term with the reload than the range. That's that's kind of my opinion. That's what I would recommend. Now, I have opted, instead of going for, say, Damcom System Mod 1 or Steering Gears, I went for the special upgrade, the special modification, which is the Engine Boost Mod 1. Uh, this increases the action time of the Engine Boost by 50%, which is so nice. It allows you to keep that Engine Boost on for much longer and allow you to zip around and do more fantastic maneuvers uh, with it than if you did not have it. So recommend that. Now moving on to the fifth upgrade, I would recommend obviously Steering Gears Mod 2. Uh, once again, you want that reduction on the rudder shift time uh, because you want to be nimble. You want to be avoiding a fire incoming from battleships. So you want this. So that's 
what I went for. Recommended. Obviously, Concealment uh, System Mod 1. Yeah, you could actually go for Steering Gears Mod 3, which reduces the rudder shift time even more, but it also, also affects your concealment. So I actually like having concealment. I find it far superior than trying to be nimble. Although, when you are going to be using your rudder shift time, you're probably detected. So you could opt for that, but I like that concealment because I like being able to pull away when I can. Uh, now moving on to my captain. Let's actually take a look at the captain. I would highly recommend getting priority target. It is so beneficial and such a helpful and handy skill to have. Uh, allowing you to obviously know uh, how many targets, how many ships are aiming at you. I know I've said this in almost every single video that I have uh, with the captain with priority target. I still recommend it. It's a good tier one skill. Uh, then expert marksman reduces the turn time on your guns. Uh, superintendent, uh, especially if you are building up a captain. Uh, then Concealment Expert, very, very beneficial. Now with the extra points, I went for Adrenaline Rush. Uh, reduces the reload time for every percent, one percent uh, health that you've lost. Uh, reduces the reload, reload time by 0.2%. Uh, then obviously Demolition Expert. Uh, pretty much you want to increase the fire chance uh, whenever possible. Uh, get flags even. So having this skill is very, very beneficial. Now for the additional two points, uh, as you can see, my captain does have two points available as well as two more on the way. You could opt for last stand. I, I would say it would be beneficial, especially with that rudder getting knocked out. Uh, but more than likely, I probably would opt for either basics fine training which would be nice because it does allow you uh, more damage. Uh, even getting survivability expert would be beneficial, just giving you more health. Um, there is also the fact advanced firing training. Uh, if you want to increase the range of your AA, very beneficial. So, I mean, there are multiple things and I will be hopefully uh, finishing this captain off here in the future and we will see what will occur but there are a few points that you can definitely go into depending on how you want to play the st louis if you want to buff the aa or you want to buff the ship itself with the increased health or if you just want to reduce the chance of your rudder getting knocked out every time someone hits the stern of your ship but anyways this is going to be it for this video we are saying goodbye to the st louis and as i mentioned at the very beginning of this video i do have a special announcement as of August 27th, memory serves me, I will correct myself in post, that was my two year mark. Two years I've been on YouTube, been posting videos, and I've had so much fun, and I've met so many great people uh, because of this. I have all of you guys supporting me, watching my videos, liking my videos, disliking my videos, everyone supporting and being helpful and being beneficial, commenting, whatnot. So, with this in mind, especially I know this is going to be more tor geared towards my World of Warship fans uh, than my other viewers, so I do apologize to them. I am going to make a contest, and I will be posting a video later on this week uh, with all the details. Uh, there is going to be a grand prize for obviously first place, uh, but do we'll have prizes for second place and third place so do keep an eye out for that video later on and hopefully you guys will enjoy the competition but anyways this is going to be it for this video thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel it has been a fun two years definitely even though i'm a little late to celebrating my two-year anniversary but it still has been fun nonetheless you guys have a great and fantastic day zaijin